Hey, what's up folks? This will be a quick one on a site I chucked over the wall a few weeks ago called the Community Compass. We're doing a 10 year retrospective work because we have new census data coming in and we're doing that kind of analysis. And I realized we have a very good site for looking at a highly detailed view of one metric at a time. And we have a good website for seeing what's going on in your neighborhood but we don't really have a good website for high level multi-metric type of analysis. And that's what this is for. I'll give you the five cent tour. It looks like this. It, uh, it's basically a CSS grid with a card layout that will rearrange to fit your screen. You can add more data. And I don't know if you notice that or not, but this button comes up to the side and spins to become an X. I'm super happy with that. I spent too much time on that, but boy, I like that a lot. So we'll add a metric. You can add metrics more than once. You can remove a metric. You can rearrange metrics by drag and drop. Uh, and each one of these is a card and the card will have a map and a summary table. And if the particular metric has more than one year you will also get a time slider and you will get a trend chart so you can add the same metric more than once like this is these are both the same metric so there's one two three four five there's seven years for that metric you could add this uh, seven cards of that metric and have each one be a map with a different year showing or however you want to arrange your data so you arrange that you can go to print it'll make a nice setup in a print size, it'll make a nice cover page, and it'll make four cards per page print. Uh, it's got a help video of yours truly. Uh, that's a minute long. I will not subject you to that. Um, the only other interesting thing is you can download lots of stuff. Each card has a hamburger menu for either viewing the metadata or downloading stuff. You can download the data is GeoJSON as CSV. You can download the summary chart as CSV. You can download the map as an image and you download the chart as an SVG. That's it in a nutshell. Uh, it it kind of looks like the crap I do, um, but uh, it, it, it works pretty well. And it's it's very fast and, and lightweight website. Now it's built using SvelteKit and it's using Tailwind CSS for the styling leaflet for the maps and frappy there, there's a charting library called frappy charts which it's using which is new to me but it's kind of neat makes very pretty looking charts uh, there are only really a couple technically interesting things about it i guess there's the drag and dot drop rearranging of the cards that's using a library called sortable js which has been around for a long time uh, the CSS grid is this component, and when it's mounted, it just sets up a sortable for the children of that grid and sets an on update event so it can update itself when things change. And the only real gotcha here was you need to give Svelte an index for this each loop here when it's putting these cards down. Otherwise, when you add and remove stuff, you get some really strange behavior because Svelte has a hard time keeping track of what's where. Once you do that, this, this little bit of code is the whole entire grid and the drag draggy droppies. So uh, pretty straightforward once, once you get past any little hiccups like that. The only other really interesting thing is the download, and I'm using... My tried and true way to do that, which is to append a link tag to the body and then man, uh, through code click it to start a download and then remove the link tag from the body, which sounds hacky, but it works great. So that bit of code is right over here. I just have this download function and you can pass it your payload encoding if you need to binary encode that. And uh, the name of the file what it should name the file when it downloads. So how that looks like on the card is if you're, uh, say, downloading a GeoJSON, you can format the GeoJSON however you want. Uh, want to, you can turn it into a string and send it to the download function along with a encoding type of text GeoJSON, or text JSON, rather. 
and give it a download name. I'm just using the title of the card and GeoJSON extension and off it downloads. And it's the same thing for most of it for the CSV. The map, it's using leaflet, it's using the canvas renderer so I can just export an image from the canvas and I don't need to give it an encoding because it's already a binary encoded image and off it goes. The chart has a built-in export function to export straight to SVG, which is very nice. So that's what it's using there. When you see this calling a map functions export image or chart functions export image, what I'm doing there is, is I ran across a different way to do child, to basically have the parent call a function in the child rather than to have it have a, a property which then have the, have the child watch to see if it changes to do something. You can bind, like for this chart, I'm binding this to chart functions. So anything you export from the chart is bound to this chart functions. So in the chart, say, I just export a function called export image, and that just exports that chart as an SVG, and the user can download it. Now, now that's so I just go chart functions dot export image and it just runs that function from within the child chart uh, component. All that sounded very complicated, but it, it works very smoothly. There's not a whole lot of code in this whole thing. It's very straightforward. Leaflet, of course, is a joy to use. And for this kind of thing, it's it's absolutely perfect. It's very small and very fast. And that's pretty much it. The source code is on GitHub. Feel free to uh, work your wiles with it or, you know, whatever. And uh, hope everybody's healthy and happy and doing all right. I'll catch you later. Bye-bye.